Today is Jerusalem Day, and Jerusalem is under attack by Hamas. Rockets coming out of Hamas uh, and, and violence on the streets of Israel now in Jerusalem. Why? Because Hamas the Pal- and the Palestinian Authority use every opportunity they can to try to cause problems. This isn't one of those situations that they're bragging about it. This is a press release issued. I mean, this is the kind of uh, organization you're dealing with here that you're supposedly both supposed to back down. But they're saying, you know, we are doing this because of crime. I mean, imagine uh, the U.S. Uh, again, this happening on U.S. soil and we just being like, hey, you got to back down or flip it. Even U.S. doing this and you don't expect a response. I mean, this is absurd. These rocket attacks are not just simply on Jewish sites. These include sites that could be hit, including the tomb of the Holy Sepulchre, Golgotha, Calvary, the sacred churches of the Greek Orthodox Patriarchate, the Via Dolorosa, all those Christian sites are always, the the rockets don't discriminate between the Temple Mount or the Western Wall, the Wailing Wall, and the the tomb of the Holy Sepulchre, folks. What is Israel's reaction to this so far, militarily? So far, Israel has already struck a number of targets in Gaza. Israel has a very strong policy of always responding. You know, you'll never get a situation where Israel will not respond to these attacks. But of course, there is an interest, of course, in, in, in calming it down, if possible. They're showing remarkable restraint. You know, I was thinking about the duplicity and hypocrisy of the White House reaction to this. Can you imagine? Jerusalem is the capital of Israel. Can you imagine if a group was firing missiles into Washington, D.C., would they be calling for for the government not to respond and to somehow restore calm? I'm going to play something for you that is very unique. Uh, as I'm about to walk into a command center in Jerusalem with Benjamin Netanyahu during another Hamas attack of rockets. It's the same enemy we're all uh, fighting. They're fighting us. They, they hate our uh, free democratic societies. They want to eradicate Israel off the face of the earth. And so they fire rockets right into this right here. city and other cities. A million people are now under rocket fire. About a quarter of a million children can't go to school. These terrorists target civilians. They hide behind civilians. That's a double war crime right, right. there. Right. Uh, and, and you know, civilized countries have to defend themselves against these uh, these terrorist criminals and that's what israel is doing that's what any country would do at least seven rockets i believe were fired into jerusalem the city for the first time since 2014 i wonder why this is what happens we warned you about this i warned all of the evangelical liberals that were out there that the one thing they forgot the one thing they forgot the whole time when it was oh to trump i can't do it i can't do this i can't vote for this was the fact that we've had virtual peace yes. in the middle east whether it was the abraham accords whether it was isis whether it was all these situations sure there were always moments but there were not rockets being fired you know because they're not scared anymore that actually things could go wrong for hamas because they don't have america backing because where is the biden administration now telling israel to back off the response from the biden administration west was uh, colonel smith was uh back off israel uh, picking their partners pretty clearly jake sullivan called senior uh, israeli officials telling them they needed to back off and restore calm in fact who jake sullivan needs to call is president abbas who just this morning praised the demonstrators that are stopping civilian cars and stoning the cars he called them heroes hamas is smelling uh weakness on the side of uh, the U.S. in the, the support of uh, Netanyahu's government and the building in Jerusalem. Actually, the rockets uh, fell only four and a half miles west of our ACLJ office in Jerusalem. Wow. Multiple media outlets are reporting that senior Israeli officials are talking to senior Biden administration officials, telling them to stop talking, to back off, to stay out of this for the time being. What is happening? The White House, by their stance and by calling on Israel to not even defend their own nation's capital, The White House is encouraging the violence. It's also the Biden administration's actions or lack of actions. Keep in mind that it was the Biden administration that resumed aid to the Palestinian Authority, notwithstanding the fact that the Palestinians refuse uh, to end their pay for slave program. So essentially, the Biden administration has suggested to the Palestinians that it is open season on the Israelis. And so it's actions as well as words that are spurring this violence. I put these missile attacks upon Israel squarely at the feet of Joe Biden and the Biden administration.
because of the pay for play, pay for slay ideas that was reinstituted because of the attitude toward Israel, because of the attitude toward in favor of the Palestinians, because of the attitude that we have taken uh, against the progress that has been made in the Abraham Accords. This is something that Joe Biden should be ashamed of. I used to have on my app, my phone, an app of uh, red alerts. And I would say whatever we were broadcasting, if that alert went on, it would go off on my phone and I would interrupt whatever we were talking about saying there are rockets being fired into Israel. I don't think I've done that in the last four years. Well, today the alerts went off. And that's because a weak Biden administration policy results in a catastrophic situation in the Middle East, which had seen for the first time in our lifetime in generations actually moving forward for peace.